What is up guys, today we're going to be talking about some of the best smartphones you can find for $150 and under. So let's get started with the Samsung Galaxy A12. So this is a really nice phone. I think this might be one of my favorite phones as far as design wise. It just looks really nice for uh, the price point. So it's just a plastic build, so nothing too special. It has a 6.5 inch a 720p plus display it's a pls ips display at 270 for the ppi overall it was a decent display again no complaints for this price point it got fairly bright and uh, yeah it looked pretty good so this phone also is upgradable to android 11 which is really good news you have the helio p35 and this phone is you know pretty much geared towards just casual use as in watching videos social media and then casually playing like a game every now and then uh, this is not really like a powerhouse phone uh, you also have micro sd support 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage depending on which model you go with and that'll have three or four gigs of ram uh, so you do have a 3.5 millimeter jack with a pretty decently uh, loud speaker on here you also have nfc on board for mobile payments and the fingerprint scanner is side mounted which is really nice it's very fast which is something i appreciate and this phone actually has pretty good cameras for this price point you have a quad camera setup 48 megapixel standard 5 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro and depth sensor shoots in 1080p on the front and back with an 8 megapixel selfie cam and uh, yeah for this price point i thought the pictures were pretty decent if you're in good lighting you can definitely get a pretty decent shot uh, out of this phone no problem of course when you take it out of good lighting uh, images do get a little bit soft but uh, overall it's fine for the price you also have one here a 5000 milliamp battery with 15 watt fast charging so this phone is going to be a beast in terms of battery life it's definitely an all-day phone for sure uh, so i really like the a12 here the moto ga power is easily one of the best phones on this list it's still extremely solid for uh, the price point right now trending at around 140. Uh, this phone just has a plastic design but you also get a water repellent coating which is pretty nice so it can survive like light splashes rain and stuff like that uh, you also have one here 6.4 inch 1080p display so it's a really nice looking display 399 for the ppi it's an ips lcd panel uh, it looks really good one of the best looking displays on this list has a little punch hole as well so i was really happy with the uh, you know just display colors and overall for this price point it looked really good uh, you also have this phone uh, on Android 11 so it is upgraded with Android 11 pretty much has a stock version of Android which is really nice so the phone stays relatively fast as well with the Snapdragon 665 and the Adreno 610 on here uh, so I do really like this phone performance wise you don't really get too many hiccups and stuff like that uh, with this guy you also get micro SD support 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM on here and this phone actually has stereo speakers which actually sound very good uh, so I was really impressed with that because it's you know rare you find stereo speakers on uh, these type of budget phones uh, you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on here but unfortunately this phone does not have NFC so do note that if you depend on mobile payments uh, you will not have it and now you do have a physical fingerprint scanner on the back which works very fast i was really happy with that uh, so the camera setup on here is actually very good so you have a 16 megapixel standard 8 megapixel telephoto and then an 8 megapixel ultra wide along with a 2 megapixel macro you get 4k video with a 16 megapixel selfie that shoots in 1080p as you can see from the photos yourself uh, you get very good detail pretty good color pretty good depth of feel on here the ultra wide is pretty good on here as well so i was really happy with the image quality i think at this price point uh you know if you're one of the people that you know just snap and take a photo you want a good photo this will definitely do it uh, so on here you do have a 5000 milliamp battery it's a pretty big battery and 18 watt fast charging so the phone definitely lasts me a day and a half easy uh, so i was really happy with battery performance on here so overall uh, this phone offers a lot especially with its high res display on here next is the iphone 7 so you can easily find this under 200 bucks and all the links will be down below and this phone has an aluminum body so it just feels uh, very premium still in the hand it feels just super solid it's also ip67 dust and water resistant still which is really nice and this phone actually has a pretty nice looking display and a more compact display these days so if you want something really small uh, this would be ideal you have a 720p plus 4.7 inch display 
uh, it is also 326 for the PPI so still relatively sharp has pretty good color gets fairly bright as well so uh, I didn't have any issues with the display the main thing with this phone is that it's actually running the latest version of iOS so you have the latest version of uh, iOS 14.5 on here uh, which is really awesome uh, so you do have the Apple A10 chip on here and the phone actually still relatively runs smooth um, I did not really run into hiccups and stuff with this phone really and it actually does pretty good with casual gaming as well so I was really happy uh, with that uh, of course on the iPhones there's no SD card support 32 gigs of internal storage and 2 gigs of RAM on here you also have some pretty decent sounding stereo speakers on here as well and you have NFC with Apple Pay. Touch ID works great these days since you don't have to, you know, pull your mask down like with Face ID. Uh, so I was happy with that. It works very fast. And also, uh, the camera setup on here, this is where the phone sort of shows its age. Uh, you only have a single lens, 12 megapixel standard, shoots in 4K, 7 megapixel selfie cam. Uh, it takes fine photos, especially if you're in good lighting. It actually takes really good video, the best video out of all of these phones actually to me. Um, but yeah, image quality is going to be okay. Like I said, you're missing uh, the ultra wide depth sensor macro. It just doesn't have those. Uh, but if you're just somebody that wants to snap a photo and get a pretty decent shot, this still takes pretty good photos. And you can do FaceTime, iMessage on this phone. All works great. Uh, so you do have on here a 1060 milliamp battery. You're not going to get excellent battery life with this phone. Um, so you usually can squeeze around maybe four hours of screen on time with this phone. So uh, you know definitely you're gonna have to charge it but it's still a very solid device next is the Samsung Galaxy A11 so this one is pretty interesting it's like the A12 but to me I do like the display a little bit more on the A11 so you still have you know a plastic body on here but the display you actually have a punch hole instead of the water drop notch which is something that I like it's a 6.4 inch IPS uh, panel 720p plus and 268 for the PPI I just overall like the design of that punch hole over the water drop notch uh, you also have one here android 10 the snapdragon 450 processor adreno 506 again these are not phones that you're going to be gaming super heavy on it's more for a casual uh, use uh, so you do have one here a headphone jack and you do have a single fire speaker uh, which sounds decent there is no nfc on this guy for mobile payments and um, you also have 32 gigs of internal storage 2 gigs of ram and micro sd support on this guy and you also have a physical fingerprint scanner uh, on the back which works fine uh, the camera setup on here is pretty decent at 13 megapixel standard 5 megapixel ultra wide with a 2 megapixel depth shoots in 1080p 8 megapixel selfie camera again you're going to get you know pretty decent images if you're in good lighting if you're out of good lighting they'll be a little bit soft um, but yeah, overall, I was really happy with this phone. If you're a casual, you know, smartphone user, just doing the basics, uh, this phone will definitely get it done for a cheap price. You have a 4,000 milliamp battery with 15 watt fast charging. Very good battery life on this phone as well. So this is definitely a phone to consider. Last is the Redmi 9. This phone is phenomenal. Uh, for the price it's actually 130 i think this is overall the best price to spec ratio phone on the list it's just very impressive i like the design on here the two-tone color design i think it looks pretty good you have a really nice 6.5 inch ips lcd panel on here it's 1080p 395 for the ppi Overall, just a really nice looking panel uh, on here. Again, 1080p, a lot of these screens usually are around 720p, so it's nice that you get that bump up in resolution. Uh, Android 10 with MIUI 11 on here runs fine. I did not really have any issues. You have the Helio G80 processor on here, Mali G52 uh, GPU on here. And again, for a you know, more casual smartphone user, this phone definitely uh, is fine for that. I didn't have any issues playing Call of Duty and stuff like that. Uh, you do have micro SD support, 32 gigs or 64 gigs, depending on which model you get, 3 gigs or 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, you also have a loudspeaker on here, which sounds decent. Headphone jack is on board. NFC is also on board. And you also get an infrared port uh, with this phone. So if you want to use it as a remote controller, uh, that's something you can definitely do. You got a physical fingerprint scanner on the back as well, which works very fast. Really, the best thing about this phone are the uh, cameras. So this phone still takes phenomenal photos. I think it takes around the best uh, photos. Maybe the G8 Power is really close to this as well. Uh, you got a 13 megapixel standard, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel depth. 
both uh, front and back shooting 1080p, 8 megapixel selfie. As you can see from the shots, you get really good shots with this phone. That's why I was really impressed with detail, dynamic range, the ultra wide was pretty good, the macro camera is fun to play with, you get a good depth of feel. So overall I was really happy with uh, the cameras on here. Uh, so you also get a massive battery at 5020 milliamps. Uh, so this phone is definitely an all day phone for sure with 18 watt fast charging so I had no issues with battery life. So that's pretty much it guys that wraps this video up and I'll catch you guys in the next one.